We've got some economic news today, and we need some help to make sense of it. Job openings, they've dropped to their lowest level since March of 2021. That sounds like good news. I, I, I mean, I guess maybe people filled the jobs or something. I mean, let's just guess people filled the jobs. You know what? No, let's not guess. Let's ask John. John Carney is going to join us now, Breitbart News Finance and Economics Editor. Okay, John, is it good news? Why have job openings dropped to their lowest level in a couple of years? So part of it, you're right. Uh, people took jobs. There was a decent amount of hiring through the month. Not a lot of firing went on. Uh, and part of it is that employers are reducing the number of openings they have out there. If you look closely at what happened in the numbers, you see that uh, over the last couple months, employers have backed off of the massive amount of hiring they wanted to do earlier this year. And frankly, last year, there was a lot of hiring. So some of that is because people have taken the jobs. And some of it is that employers are looking at this situation and saying, you know what, I may have enough people I may be able to replace some people with technology. Uh, wages have gone up, so it's no longer as cheap as it was to hire people. And they're facing a lot of cost pressure still on the inflate, you know, from inflation. So that also saps a little bit of their willingness to bring on new workers. And frankly, they can read the headlines as well as you and I can. They see unemployment's only at 3.5%. 3 so they know there's not that many workers out there looking for jobs, which makes it much harder to hire anyone. John, where did all the workers go? I have so many friends that either own a small business or run a little sandwich shop here in town, or they're, they're managers of an auto dealership. And these people cannot find anybody, John. They, they lament to me. Anytime work comes up on the weekend, whenever we're hanging out, I can't find anyone. I can't find one. I can't even get someone to show up for an interview. He'll show up for the interview and won't even show up to the job. Where is everybody? Yeah, so a big thing that happens is a lot of older workers left the workforce altogether during the pandemic. They said, look, it, you know, they, they reevaluated their life and they said, I'd rather hang out with my grandkids. I don't have, you know, I don't want to keep working in the formal economy. So a lot of younger workers then fill the slots that some of those older workers filled. And so people, so you might think, well, why am I facing a problem? I wasn't trying to hire young people anyway. Yeah, but a lot of the young people took the jobs some of the older workers took. And so that's what happened to a lot of the workforce is basically earlier than expected retirement uh, has led to a diminished workforce uh, at this point. How are the people retiring early when the value of the dollar is down like 20%? How are you retiring early? Right, it's very hard. But remember, uh, if you own your house, your house has probably gone up in value a lot since the beginning of the pandemic. So it, particularly if you owned your house without a mortgage on it, you have a lot of equity that you've built up. And even if you had a mortgage, you probably have a very low interest rate mortgage. And so you've been able to build up a lot of equity. People are taking out loans against that. The stock market, frankly, has done very well over, you know, not just over the last couple of years, sure, you know, had a bad time during the worst of the pandemic, but basically over the last six, seven years, it's been a, and frankly, over the last decade, we've had a big run. So a lot of people who were saving for retirement looked out. I mean, if you read these articles about, you know, that people write into newspapers and websites like MarketWatch and say, you know, I'm 58, can I retire? I'm 62, can I retire? A lot of people are retiring at an age where they might not have otherwise. Sure, that will mean diminished uh, spending power for themselves in the future, but I think the pandemic, frankly, changed people's sort of mental equation when it came to that. This isn't the only jobs news we're gonna get this week. We have more coming. What is it and what do we expect? Sure, this is very important because it'll feed into something we get at the end of the week. One of the most crucial ratios in the economy right now is the amount of people who are unemployed compared with the amount of job opening. That is the measure of tightness in the labor market. Traditionally, historically, this has averaged about 0.6%, meaning uh, there are more people unemployed than there are job openings, that we couldn't actually fill them all up. When you got to about one-to-one, -one, that was actually a really good job market. We're now at a situation where we have 1.5 openings for every unemployed person. At the end of the week on Friday, we're gonna get the latest jobs numbers. That'll tell us how many jobs we created in August, 
and how many what the unemployment rate is how many unemployed people there are we're expected to create a lot fewer jobs than we have been for most of this year the labor market is expected to cool but that unemployment rate is probably going to stick around 3.5 percent as a result we're probably going to have stick around this ratio of 1.5 percent uh 1.5 people unemployed or sorry job openings for every one unemployed person that's still a very tight labor market that will worry the fed that inflation could actually pick back up again either later this year or early next year oh wonderful i can't wait to see how they handle that john thank you so much brother i appreciate you man thanks for having me man i have great news if you enjoyed that i have a youtube channel you can subscribe to whatever i do it'll be right there on youtube so go subscribe today